Welcome everybody, this is Colin Hobson and my colleague Johan Nell often does this presentation with me. What we're going to look at is customizing your geoportal for user-centric data access with Enlighten 5. So there's no way we can cover every last part of user-centric data access, but I will focus on the things that can be adjusted and some of the benefits of Enlighten 5 and how you can improve the, the user experience a lot, actually, with those additional ones. And the main focus really here is on presenting data via tooltips and the advanced forms through the system. So that's the focus here. And I will start just with this slide here, which kind of explains why, you know, what, what some of the, the main parts are. The whole point of a web map is to give users efficient data access and make it intuitive. Essentially, we want to make it as self-serve as possible so that people don't have to learn how to use the software. They can figure it out. And so in, in doing that, you've got to look at who, what, and how. So if we look at the what part first, that would be the data, what's in there, what the priority is, relationships, and links within the data and what you're trying to present. That is within the context of the user what they want to see for the given work that they want to do, and also within the context of what the technology is and what the capabilities are and what you can use. So I'm going to be focusing on how you can use this particular technology with some data and what we need in the data and how to change the way that's presented so that it's a highly efficient ecosystem there and can get used by multiple people. So let's jump in. Enlighten 5, we did put a lot of focus on, oh, there's a number of things, and I'm really just going to focus on a couple of them. The improved workflow for users, and that's very specific on how to get the appropriate information and the flow of how they drill down and find out more detail about something on the map. We also want to reduce the learning curve, make it self-discovery and intuitive. And so we'll show you a little bit on that, how that works, and we'll spend a fair amount of time on a couple of things. So this little diagram shows Obviously, the user has context, so nothing new here. Most web maps have layers. There's visibility of layers that can change with different scales. What we've had in the past in Lighten is profiles, which is a subset of layers saved as a profile that the user can toggle to and switch between one context and another for their particular task or data or whatever. There's also filters. Those then reduce down the data on the screen. Tooltips are a really big deal because it makes a dynamic interactive map. And I'll be spending a lot of time on tooltips and show info as they work together in Enlighten. So tooltips are very simple. They're very dynamic. They're very intuitive for users. They can be just one line, in which case I would say the word tooltip is quite correct. They can also be essentially a quick information panel over here. I don't know if we should introduce a new term like a quip as opposed to a tooltip if it gets sophisticated. It doesn't really matter, but let's get into the heart of how you would use those. Tooltips can have more than just data from the database. You can have hyperlinks, photos, and you can link directly into the show info panel in Enlighten. Now, Enlighten 5, we've changed the name of Advanced Form to show info because that's what it's doing. Advanced form presumes there's a basic one or uh, whatever, but it is still the advanced form. We've just extended it, one of which we've added a function where you can, in the tooltip, put a link to the advanced form, and I will be showing you how to use that and how that works. So these items in yellow are ones that we'll talk about and that are new capabilities in Enlighten. On the show info form, what we've done is change that so it's dynamic. So you can have it open with nothing selected. And as you select stuff, it'll populate itself. And as you change what you select, it'll repopulate automatically. Whereas in Enlighten 4, you had to uh, select stuff, click the form and open it, and then close the form and go find something else to select. And if you had nothing selected, the form would say, sorry, can't do, go select something. There's also visible sub-selections. I'll show you that in just a minute. And that's very useful in as much as it will allow you to see if you've got 10 things selected, you can highlight one and it'll show you which one of the 10 on the map that is, which is very useful. And then the other stuff is drill down, uh, links and tabs. That's all available already. So that's some of the context or the three items of things that we can look at. So let's just go straight to Enlighten, take a look. And I'll bounce around a few different Enlightens here. Let's let's look at, say, this one here. I'm going to have to log in. So let's take a look. So this is Enlighten. Once again, there have been other webinars with the user interface. And so you'll get simple tooltips. So if you move over something, there's a simple one. And and then you can you work your way through this. And so with the user here, the change is there's no 
advanced form button, it's now show info. So the this Enlighten has a core toolbar here that stays there for everybody. I'll make that bigger. So there is the, the home panel, Enlighten task pane, otherwise known as. It does have the user settings and user options in it now. And so that's new having these icons here. But I just mentioned that. So let's just turn on this and, and let's go from there. Okay, so we'll just make those large icons just so you can see them. This is a pretty busy map, and maybe I should, you know, turn some layers off. So the other thing in the Lighten 5 is you can get a backdrop map and use any of those uh, supported ones there. So that's nice for that. And let me actually open a, a different Enlighten to kind of walk you through a few items on that. So you'll notice on the screen here, these are profiles. So if I choose one of these, it will turn on the layers that were saved when you started that up. Now, if you've got single sign-on, of course, the user doesn't get this panel. And, and there you'll see with Enlighten 5, we do have configuration stuff. There's a getting started video and there's a getting started document. And then there's the full user guide. So we're sort of putting this in here as standard stuff so that people can easily get going and learn on that. Let me once again figure out the login. So that was the profile there. In here, simple tooltips, right? And we'll, we'll delve into that and I'll walk you through some examples. The profiles are here on the icon. You'll see it's the same thing. So if you didn't have a single login, you could go here. And what that's gonna do is you can just go in and turn on any of these layers and it'll go and uh, set that specific set of layers available for you. So if I wanted this one, it would go in and toggle the layers for that particular thing. And so that's just a predefined. And so here you actually hit new, you can save them. So that's one way already of improving your map to show this. That's a demo. We're going to work through this. You'll notice the layer panel there. So whatever they see needs to be context specific. The way in which you color these needs to be clear. Now I'll come back to the legend. Once you get a number of features, you actually don't want this thing to be fully expanded for the users, but you do need clear, you know, layout of tools and symbols. And these ones are fairly basic. They're all simple ones, circles and triangles and things. So built in, whereas you could have your own custom ones as well. But one thing on a web map, try and keep them fairly clear like this to make it easy to use. They don't, you don't really want the full engineering thing. So I would prefer this. So this is a customer that has a lot of different utilities than giving that to the user because they'll just get confused through this. And as they get to learn more, they can see that, oh, I want it to work within a group. So just that's sort of my suggestion. I showed you profile. So here's that same website. You can go there. Or once you're in the product, you're going to see this and it's easy way of switching. And so there's a, a nice little toggle there where you can define that yourself in the system. So if you go here, you can actually go in and, and turn on and off different stuff. And actually what we'll do is just go to where there's slightly more data. Yeah, there we go. And so if you, I've turned on these little panels here and when you come now here to the profiles, you can save. So you can say new, give it your own name. So this is wastewater with record plans. And you can private or public. Private uh, puts a little minus sign next to it. But is that user specific? You can even go in and select an icon there. So maybe you want this one. Those are in a folder somewhere in Enlighten. So if you wanted your own ones, you could do that. And then you hit save. So now for this user, they can come in tomorrow and flip flop between that profile versus the current profile, which is this one. And it will now be available for them. And you'll see this one has a minus next to it. So if you, if you get a list, here's actually the easiest. You'll see the plus ones are public. That one's private. So if you're working on a project, then you have a certain subset. And this becomes really useful when you have lots and lots of layers. So moving on then. Filters are also useful. The Enlighten admin can set up filters. They are predefined and there's a lot of options for that. It's another way of controlling. So here's a city's water and you can see all the pipes and say they wanted to show the large pipes you could click the filters so once again a little bit about enlighten 5 this this core toolbar the top one is the enlighten toolbar you can turn that on and off the second one is the advanced toolbar by default it typically comes out somewhere near the bottom any icon in green is active so this is layer filter 
which would open this one and you could drop down and go look at it. So here the person has selected large pipes. And so now you can see on the screen, the context has changed and it's only showing you those that are between 10 and 18. So just another thing about filters. So you look for the advanced toolbar, this icon take you to that dialog. And when you have a filter active, you'll notice the word filtered is added in the legend, by the way. All right, so let's talk about tooltips then. That's really at the heart of the matter, because in the tooltip, we can link straight to the advanced form. And I'll show you a little more about the advanced form as well, because that's also really, really useful for the user. So in the tooltip, this is a very simple tooltip. It's just one column. And tooltips themselves, as you move your cursor, literally as you hover that cursor, it does a database read through the definition of what's in the tooltip to whatever you asked it to do. Okay, so on mouse pause, you set that up in Maestro uh, where you define the layer and the tooltip is on a per layer level. Okay, so not themes within the layer, but on a per layer level. And Enlighten 5 offers some additional stuff that wasn't there before. By default, it's active as you move around and you can, as you hover, you get the tooltip. You can actually turn that on and off. There's an icon right here. You see this one? If you click that, it'll show hide tooltips. So if you're busy on the map, like this one, and as you're moving around, you get all these tooltips and you don't like that, you can go to this icon here, which has its own tooltip, but it's show hide and click it. So now you can see it's active there, but as I move around, I don't get any tooltip anymore. And so sometimes that's useful, especially when you have a density of things like polygons. If the draw order here is high, then you're gonna get the polygon and not the stuff underneath, and it becomes sort of a challenge. So that's one of the ways of dealing with it. So you can turn that back on. There's also the ability, you can set the tooltips into manual mode through a setting. Okay, and I'll show you that here. If you right mouse button, there's options and the options will give you this dialogue here. And let me show you how that works. It's quite useful actually. So I've got tooltips are active right now. And all I'm getting is the file names for each one of these little underlays. But if I go right mouse button, you can go to options on a good day. And there's this toggle for manual feature tooltips. So let's turn that on and we can leave this guy active. So now as I move my mouse around, I'll zoom in over here, say, as I move my mouse around, nothing happens until I click something. So that's what we mean by click to show there. And so if I go here and I click on this, then I get the tooltip and it will stay there until I click on something else like that one or that one. And so this is a way to manually control and it's a really good way actually. Some people prefer this, especially once your map's got a lot of features on it, those tooltips can become overwhelming and now you're in full control. You only get them when you click on something. So this is the first entry into making this thing user intuitive because if they know that they can click that and set it, then it's really kind of your first thing you're doing is showing them some data. And so let's look at how we can control this tooltip here and then how that can go straight into the show info form. While we're here, I'll just talk a little bit about show info. Okay, that I selected stuff. <laughs> I'll turn off that layer because it's a lot of these polygons. And if you select them, then they the record plans here. So we'll turn off the record plans. And so as I select here, you can see I've got a lot of different things. The current selection color is the dark blue. And normally, like the previous Enlighten, this is one way of getting to information. You can do this and go show info. However, in previous Enlighten, if you went show info or advanced form in that case, it would, and I'm gonna turn off that, get rid of this. It used to say, sorry, you need to select something before you'll see this form. We've changed that now. The form can be here and you can leave it up and running. I'll move it slightly to the side so that we can select some stuff. So if I select, say this, now the form populates and it's interactive. If I go in here and I select something else, it's interactive, it, it updates, so you can see that, right? And this also illustrates one of the problems. This form is a detailed form. It's designed for a whole lot of information and tabs and drill downs and all sorts of things, right? So there's a whole lot of data that you can use here. And as you select stuff, you can walk your way through it. So this is very, very useful to do. And I'll show you one thing here while I'm here. This is how the user gets to information. But this dialogue takes up a lot of real estate. And what we've tried to do in Enlighten here is reduce the real estate and make it so that things are easy to see through. You can set the transparency on these, but you can also pop this form out and I'll do that now. So now it becomes a second window, whereas the first 
default is it's a window within the map context. So you, if you went to your browser here, you would have just the map. You wouldn't have that other window there. And now it's this other window and it's just like the previous one in Enlighten where I can move that to the other screen. Okay, so now if you see this screen, I've moved, I'll move it back, but it's now going on to the screen to my right here. And I can leave it there and it remains interactive. So just to you know, show you that. So now even though it's popped out, it remains interactive as I go in and select stuff. It's going to chop and change on that. So if I select this, you'll see the thing disappeared, but it's gone now and pulled in uh, those four parcels and these gravity pipes and service connections. So this is really useful. And if you're done with it floating out there, you can hit this icon that's now turned itself into uh, the arrow coming back and it'll pop itself back into this context. So we think this is actually really useful, really powerful. And there's a few more things here. You do notice also there is a toolbar on this particular one. So I could go clear selection from here. I don't have to go up there. It does the same thing, but it's right here. And in here, then it adds some additional functionality. Like I could go back to previous selection here. And now it'll go to that and I can actually walk, well, what did I have selected before that? Well, these ones and it'll walk backwards and forwards between those. You can also save selections. You can refresh this form from here and clear the selection. So if you've got this on another screen, then that's very useful, that interactive and dynamic feedback. So let's get on then with the tooltips here. Let's go to tooltips themselves. So tooltips, let's look at how you can go from this, which shows when you hover your mouse, something like that just one column of data to something like that, where you've now built it out so that it's not only showing you the node type, but an ID and some data out the database and some additional guys I mentioned show info and I'll show you how to set that up. So you can go straight from the tooltip to the advanced form slash show info these days. So we'll walk through these and this is sort of how I build these uh, tooltips up over time. So tooltips, as I said, were done in Maestro. So let's go and look. So now we're on the sewer node. So this is the actual server. And here's the first tooltip. Is let's see, we've got that as a node type, and we need to get on that particular enlighten, which is this one. And let's go zoom right in to a specific spot. So I'll just use the bookmark and go to a private one. You see the minus, and we'll zoom to that guy just to kind of get some context here. Okay. So tooltip at the moment on the manhole is manhole pub. And that's come from Maestro. So if you looked at Maestro here, and we're just on this particular one, the feature is there. That's the tooltip. You can have one tooltip for any number of themed subsets, right? There are other things you can do here. You could filter this. So if you don't want two different tooltips for this data in the same spatial table, you have a choice. You could have two layers for that table and filter it here, or within the tooltip you can start putting a couple of variations if you've got this then do that kind of deal but what a tooltip is it's it's a pop-up that is essentially a an html container that is passed and allows you to access the database information at the same time as putting a visual on the screen for you so let's go in and play with this one so as i said i'll walk my way through this here so I'm looking at this text document. You'll see why fairly quickly. I'm looking at it in Notepad++ and I've actually saved the file as HTML because when we get down to these URLs, it's a little easier to see what's linked and what's not, but any text editor. So I can go first and say, well, what about, I actually want a piece of text in front of the tooltip and then the value. So this value is the column name on that feature. So you'll see there is node type right there. Don't worry about it being checked. That's just whether that data is available there or not. The tooltip can call any column on the feature and you can put in a piece of text. So if I take this one that says concatenate, which literally means take the, anything between the commas. So any concat statement has two parts separated by, by a comma. Typically you'll put text in front and then something after it. In this case, a database column. So we'll go in there and we'll just change this and I'll paste that in there, hit save, and then go back to the map. You don't even have to do anything. You don't have to publish. You don't have to do anything. If you move it over now, you'll see sewer node manual pub. So the piece of text and the column. So I'm starting off slow. I'll go faster and faster. Don't worry. And so let's take a look then. If we go a little further, what if I want two columns? So part of the tooltip and the nomenclature is I can put a second set of items in there like this. The slash n means new line. Node ID would be the text in there. And then this would be the column. And I can carry on and on by putting these pairs. So here's another pair 
we have got the text being GID colon and the space and then the column GID. So if we put this one in, and I think you'll get the picture pretty quick. And I think most people have this sort of tooltip set up already anyway, and I'm just giving you that as background. So let's go and put that in over here. And I typically work in something like Notepad++ so that you can go in and build this out. And this is typically the way, just sequentially build it out so you can see until you get familiar, then you can, you know, cheat and, and pull ones that you've previously used and that sort of thing. But once again, now you'll see I've got these three columns, but they kind of look tatty, right? They look a little tatty in as much as this doesn't the man this data for the second and third lines here that doesn't line up with that one over there and so that's a little bit of a problem so let's go fix that and that introduces then a new capability as well so in the tooltip we can say well what about we add in an icon and a url so now you'll see the first part of this tooltip is essentially exactly the same as above but now i can go new line and put in a href, so a break, and then now I'm putting in essentially what's going to be interpreted HTML. And in the HTML, I'm pulling up a standard URL for Google, which you could use if you knew the lat long of something, you could literally type the latitude and longitude values in there, and then you'd be able to run this URL. However, we have latitude and longitude in a column on this particular feature. So if I go here, there's a column here, lat long, you see it right there. And so that's actually been populated automatically from a trigger in Munsys, set up in Oracle and Munsys so that it just populates that from the lat long, because this state is not actually in lat long, it's in state plane. But I want the lat long because that's what Google's going to be looking for, right? So that's what you use. So any URL, in this case, it's HTML with an embedded reference here to a column. And then it's got all the other stuff that the URL for Street View would have. And that's essentially the, the scale that it comes in at and uh, all that sort of stuff. And it's just a hyperlink. So it's going to open in a new window. Target is blank. And we're also going to put in a little link icon there. So you can put in an image source. It's just pointing to an icon. That icon's actually in the folder in Enlighten where we happen to have some images. So that's on the web server. And then you can put in a piece of text like show in street view. So that's also part of the hyperlink because it's all part of this A tag here. So pretty straightforward. Let's put it in. So now we can take this, put it here, save. We still don't need to do any republish or anything like that. So now I've got those three things that I had before and I've added an image that also has a hyperlink and there it goes. So that image is just a PNG of whatever size. There's the manhole right in the middle spot on okay so just a useful piece of functionality but it makes for a very quick and easy way to link outside now that html could be anything let's also go a little further and say well what if we put show info there so that when i go to that particular uh, node i can get more information so what we've got is the same stuff there and we've inserted, so the, the bottom part is that same old Google bit, so that href down there. What we've added above it, and I'll leave it like this so we can see, is there's a function that we've, we've introduced that is part of Enlighten, a JavaScript function that you can put right into the tooltip. And what it does is it says, give me the layer name and the ID column, which pretty much mostly is going to be GID. Now, the layer name, I know it's this, and I know we've purposely used the same layer name as the table name in Munsys. So if you look, I'll leave it on the right here. These are actually the layer names. They don't have to be capitalized. They could be whatever. Basically, the only thing on a layer name is you're not allowed spaces on a layer name in MapGuide. But in this case, the layer name, it reads the same as the, the table name in uh, Munsys. So all you have to do is go in and add this little piece into what we had before. And you can put in a piece of text that says show detailed information. I added the word detailed because it kind of leads the user through because they've got that little panel and then they can see that. So let's go and put in the show info, right? And so I'll copy this and we'll put it in here. You'll notice that when I go here, I go control A and then I hit delete to make sure there's nothing left over because this tooltip can't, you can't like structure it nicely in the document and then put it in here because there could be tabs and too many spaces and stuff and keep track of, which is while you're busy building these tooltips, I do actually tease this thing out and sometimes split it into, into the levels that you want. I'll show you that in a minute, just so that you can track it because if you miss out one of these little commas or apostrophes, this thing gets messed up. Okay. In fact, I'll show you what happens when that gets messed up. 
Well, let's go and, and use one that's actually working here. So it's just all you have to do is save, right? So I saved it once again, same thing. Let's go and look. So now on these, on here, we've got um, the uh, manhole, the three things. We've got show detailed information, show in street view. There's no icon here, so this is just a hyperlink on its own. Still useful to see. So what's happened is when you've got, I'll turn that off. When you have show info, we'll just clear this and we'll do it once again here. So as I move over this to get a tooltip, Enlighten already knows the GID of that feature, it knows what feature and what the GID it does. So literally this function, it just allows the person to click here instead of knowing which icon in this list to go to. So it makes things a whole lot closer to hand and they can just click here. What it does then as you select that for point features, it zooms to the middle of the screen, it selects it. So you'll see this red thing. And then and then there you, you, you have that information, which reminds me also. So that's just one thing that's selected. And now you can do drill info. But now, in essence, that shows that you've got quick panel information here, sort of this more than a tooltip now, and you can drill down to see the details. So this becomes very useful. While we're here, I'll also show you one other thing that we introduced in Enlighten on the advanced form, because this one selected and zoomed to, and the, the thing has turned red, which is a little weird because my selection color is actually yellow, if you see that. So if I select a couple of these things, like I'll just do a few like so, right? So my, you'll see my selection color is yellow. And as I load the form, what it does is there's the sub-select that I had uh, hinted at earlier, so you'll see that this is the row selected. And because I know what I'm looking for, it highlights it in red. So now there's a sub-select. The yellow is everything selected. The red is the sub-select. That's the particular row you're on. So neat thing to do is as you traverse this, so now I've switched to this one and we know it's that one. And that really helps you get within that selection, which one you're looking at, right? So that is very useful. So that's a, an easy way then of walking your way through these things. And it's, it's kind of useful to be able to do that. However, in this particular tooltip, we could also put an icon in here. So let's go back and improve on that quickly. So now I've added an image for show info. So same thing, but now what we've done is we've added in this little piece for an image source as part of that hyperlink. And I'm using a PNG. The icon I'm using, it comes from the same place we got all the new icons, or not all of them, a number of them for Enlighten uh, 5. So let's go in here and delete that and paste it in and save it. And let's go look at that tooltip again. Now we're over here. So now I've set the tooltip, still give me those three lines of information, but now I've got a nice icon. It's the same icon that we used over there. I've actually also changed the show in street view icon. These two are standard icons. The I one is the same one as used there, just a different size. And these icons come from Google's material design project. A lot of these are just part of them. So they standard SVGs and you can export them as PNGs, etc. And we obviously had to make a whole lot for Enlighten as well to extend that out and, and use those. But that's where we got those icons. So if you're looking for icons, go and look up material design or former as it's called in Google. And actually there will be thousands of icons available. And so to keep it looking consistent, I suggest you go with that. But once again, show info is going to do the same thing as that. And so you'll see you can work that out there. Let's go in and actually make a mistake. So if you come in here and you pull out a piece of info, so let's take this little apostrophe out of that URL and you save it. I'll show you what an error looks like. Hopefully this one will show what I'm talking about. So now as you go here, you'll get a tooltip that starts showing you the internals of what you wanted. Some of it will look like it's working and other stuff will be messed up. You see it's got the concat and the details of what it's trying to do as opposed to the actual data. So it's not finding those columns of data. The URLs are still working fine, but this is now messed up. And so let's go and return that to some state of normal. So if we put that all into a table, which, which will fix the problem I just made there. In the table itself, and I'll actually walk through this, it's all the same. Let's just put it in, show it to you, and then we can walk through it. You don't want to go here and just start deleting, because if you go and do delete here, you've got tons of stuff left, or if you just select what you see, there may be things left. I always go Control A, delete, see that it's clear, paste it in, and see that your cursor's at the end, and you've got the closing brackets, etc. and then save that, and then let's go and look and see, and this should now be basically the complete version. Right, look at that.
So now it's got a header in it. It's got a table. These line up nicely. It's much easier to read. They've been bolded, so the data's bolded. And this is here, and actually I've made this icon part of the hyperlink, so whether you put on the icon or the text. So little subtle things, but this means now this user can go there, and that's going to do that drill down. And without even having to know about any of these things, they can pop this straight up. And because we've put these icons on here, they can actually get rid of this toolbar as well. And they can just keep this thing moving along and get that data. So it does really improve things a lot as to what is available for a user to drill down. You know, going from simple like this to that, it really improves things quite a lot. So that's how we go from this tooltip to that tooltip. I do have a whole bunch of slides that kind of run through a similar thing. You can see, you know, you put the text and then you've got to add text in front. You can put in, you know, a lot of info. Let's go a little further. See, here's how the table works. And here this laid out a little better. I said I would do that. Where we've got a header style in there. This word geoscan images is in a header there with a background color. It's a bigger font, different style. And then we've put these into, we started the table right there and put these into that table. And, and then it lines up nicely for you. And you can put all of that in there as well. And then right at the end, we've added in the show info. So this is very useful now. You've got the header and you can line it up and it's pretty easy to do actually once you, you get familiar with that. You can also add in photos and I'll show you some good and bads on that. It's literally just linking to the photo. Now what you do need is the file name that's related to that feature should be in a column, right? So if you look carefully here, you'll see that there's a folder, and it can be anywhere that IIS can see, but that folder here, typically we keep it in the Enlighten 5. We have either images or data or whatever. And then it'll have a value. Here, this one's hard-coded to that JPEG. But where it says Hydrant 1 there, you could just the same put a end quote and insert in between two little commas the column name, which is usually like image file name or something like that, and then continue with your URL and then add the show info stuff at the bottom. But that's how you could get then. So as you move over each different feature, it's going to read the file name from a specific GID related value on that particular table. Okay, so let's move along. So here's some example tooltips. I'll walk through them. They highlight a few things. This is what we used to do. Well, first of all, this is purple and that's blue, but these guys have green ones like we just did on sewer. They have all sorts of different colors that reference different things. And then down below, they've also linked to their document management system. So on each feature here, and these have been removed here, but there will be project number. There could even be the sheet number of the project. And that would allow you to go and look at the drill down information in the document management system and or the asset management system. Okay. And then they've also used the Amigo Cloud product, which is a mobile app linked to Munsys, their live synchronized update either way and taken pictures. So this is a picture. And what we've done there is we actually make a thumbnail, same as this one, a thumbnail of the original resolution. Now, if you put in your URL, if you just put the image name and it can't find it, you're going to get this. It's a little disconcerting because the user may then try and click at the original resolution and then it's going to pop up. Sorry, can't find the file. So we want to avoid that. So what you can do is basically tell them, hey, there's no picture and I'll show you how to do that. If there is original resolution, they can click on it. They'll see the full resolution of the picture right there. And so that's useful. And in fact, I can show you one of those. Quickly, let's go here. Let's open up a different Enlighten where I know they've been doing some Amigo Cloud work. Um, so what these guys did here is as they walked around doing the valve exercising, they had the person also have a copy of Amigo Cloud linked to the Munsys database. So these folks have done that. So this is their base map. Oh, I've got some other layers on. Let's, let's go and turn those off. So this is a themed by age here. And so including the parcels, trying to find the lead pipes. So there's various tooltips here. This could be improved. We could line up these, do that by putting them in a table. But at least you can see with what the data is. But as if I go over a valve that's on a hydrant, I could see that there's no photo on that one yet. But there may be another one if I'm lucky like that. Okay, and then here, you could have put a link there to say view it at an original resolution, or you could click it here. But you'll notice this is a high-res photo. And if we put that in the tooltip, it would have taken the whole screen and you wouldn't have seen your map. So you need the thumbnail there. So part of the Munster's Field Sync 
allows you to take those photos and will automatically render those and link them, in fact, through Enlighten onto the photo. What we're doing there to say there's no photo is a little trick that there's a null value. And if the column you're pointing to in the tooltip is null, then you can do something else. And the something else is just show me literally an image file here, a JPEG that says no photo yet. Okay. But it does mean the user's not going to click on it and see it in its full resolution. You know. Also, yeah. So let me show you how, to, how that works quickly. And so we just say that there's no photo built out there. And I'll put that in. So here we go. Couple of other examples. And that is the geoscans thing just shows you a tooltip. And we'll just walk through this one a little bit and the ability to actually show a backdrop behind here. But the icons are useful. Once again, where did I get these icons from the Google's former system there? And we get the material design icons and there's quite a few of them. So let's go in and look at that. So the way that tooltip's going to work to build this is the first part is the table along there. So this guy just has the backgrounds gray and then it has the word says show utility plan as geoscan underlay and end the header. And then we go to the next part of that, which is this original plan sheet. So it's just the load onto map as a georeferenced underlay. So just the same as we had show info, we also have a function that says load geoscan. This is one of ours. So it's part of the enlightened libraries, but it literally takes the layer name here GID, the index column there. And if I optionally, you can put a little icon next to it. So once again, I've just pulled this one straight out of the zoom icon in the Google stuff. And then you've got that right there. And then you put in a piece of text, like load into the map as a geoscan underlay, right? So it says that there load onto map. So if we go into the next one, very similar pattern. You can't leave the spaces when you're putting this together and to put it into the maestro, into the tooltip uh, row there. But pretty much this is the same thing for view original sheet. So this is a link to the actual image file name .pdf concatenated in, if you see that. The URL encode, that's really useful. That'll deal with any spaces or funny things within that column. So that these are functions and operators that are available, but it references a column name. And then if I go to the last one, the show detailed, this one is just the same as what we did before. It's the formed loader and then the column name and the GID. Okay. And so this one is advanced form loader versus geoscan loader. And that's how you get that tooltip to work right there. Let's just go back and actually show that in action. So on this enlighten here, the task pane is now here as opposed to having one monster toolbar across the top. We've got the simple one here and you can get to your user options here. So I'll just turn this to not use large icons there, makes it a little tidier. And then we're going to go in and use this bookmark function. And I'm going to go to this spot. I think we are started. All right, this will do. So in here, I'll turn on layers. Let's actually get rid of the base map just for a minute. So we've got that. And by the way, in Enlighten, you can have external layers. So the open street map, this is pulling it live, right? So it really performs well. It gives you that context for nothing. And you could put any WMS in here. Here's the Esri's world imagery as well. So you can toggle it and it's controlled here. I'm actually going to put it to none so that I don't have a lot of noise so I can illustrate what I'm trying to show here. And then also these things can be all collapsed here. So let's go and turn on the geoscan images and I'll turn on the, the medium one. So this will turn on a set of boxes. So this box is one of those plans. And if I go to the original plan sheet here, use that thing we just set up, it'll open that PDF and here's the actual plan. Kind of cool. Really nice. You can go straight to the plans. That's useful. Also, I could say, you know, I actually want to put that as an underlay. I'll select it first and it worked. So put that function there and that's turned it on as an underlay. And now you actually can go in and see that thing in context and it would have been used to capture this data here. So this is a water one. So there you'll see the connections as they were captured, valve, and then the lateral there with another connection. So it puts it in context. It's very useful little function there and you can turn that on and off within the system there. So that's sort of how that works and you can go check that out. There's a couple of things not to do. Like I said, if you put a big image in your tooltip, it'll take up half your map. And is it that usable? Can the person see everything they need? Can they zoom around on it? So in the tooltip itself, you can include, as we have, a whole lot of HTML references. You can also embed iframe and literally have essentially 
reference to a web fridge within that iframe. And I have a very simple one here, but it's kind of useful. Let's go back to this map here and go turn on everything. Oh, and this, this geoscan underlay, by the way, that image is loaded, it's created a layer and it's right here. So if you want to turn it off, you can do that. Be aware, however, when you do turn it off, the next time you load one, it'll be loaded, but it won't be on. So you may not see it. So you just got to check that. Let's go and turn on base map because it's one last thing I wanted to show you here. We can turn off sewer and water. And uh, on the base map, I believe I have road center lines. And on road center lines, I put a small little URL thing in there. We can go and look here for road center lines and go to the tooltip. So in this tooltip, there is nothing but an iframe and I've faked it a little bit because I've put in the source to be a hard-coded HTML. You could have this as a column name so that you see this value relating to the value on the map, as I've shown you. But just to illustrate this on this particular map, as I move my mouse over this guy here, and good points for anybody who sees why it's not showing me a tooltip, it's right there, that guy's active. So turn that on. So now I get tooltips coming up. But on this particular one here, we'll turn off those geoscans because they're overriding my function that I want. So on this here, I've linked that iframe. This is the URL in the iframe and you, it's a streaming video and there it is. You can pop it there. This particular streaming has picture in picture. So I could actually pop it down there and then carry on and play it whenever I wanted it. But yeah, if you want to put a stream if you have you know security systems or whatever and you've got the beacons there a person can turn that on and off it goes it'll just turn off whenever you're ready in this case i've sort of hard coded it so every street's going to have the same one because you know there's not too many of these that are streaming uh, and i just wanted to find one that was easy to use here but you can embed inside that string the actual variation according to whatever feature you're on much as we've shown so i believe that's about it Let's finish up then. Any questions, feel free to pull them in and we can take it from there. So I see question I had, when will Enlighten 5 be available? It's in preview. As you see, I've been showing you a lot of different sites running on it. There's a couple of variables, but we are done with the QA cycle in its current form. We're done with functionality as it is, the documentation's very much there in place. And so we're very happy with that. So we're probably looking at about a month out. If I log out here, you'll see the user guide here. You, we've actually moved that stuff to online. You'll see even the icons have been tracked over and you can start drilling down and go look at stuff on each of the sections. So you can do all of that stuff. You'll see there's the documentation. So good question, but yeah, it is actually available now, but this was the preview release. So we've got another one in the works and it's very close to being released. We're very happy with the functionality and everything at this point. I don't see any further questions, but uh, I think, do you think those changes and just showing you how to traverse from the tooltip straight into the show info and how to use that show info dynamically on the map is quite a big deal. And then also the tooltips themselves, just the capabilities, images, videos, and that sort of thing. Very useful. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody. We'll, we'll leave it at that and appreciate your attending the webinar.